We begin by opening a new file. You know how to create a new Photoshop file now. Look for the brush icon here and click it and draw. Reminds you of school days, doesn't it? Let's see it up close. Observe how the edges are soft, just like in a brush stroke using watercolors. The brush size can be easily increased or decreased by pressing the bracket keys on the keyboard like this. Observe how the edges are soft. We could make the stroke transparent by changing the opacity. Watch. Let me reset the opacity to 100% and use the pencil tool. Now for pencil lines. Go back and right click the brush tool icon. There is the pencil tool. Select it and draw. Observe the difference in the pencil stroke and the brush stroke. The pencil stroke has strong edges which makes a good drawing tool and the soft brush stroke makes it a good paint tool. What pairs well with a pencil? Yes, the eraser. And Photoshop has that tool too. It's shaped just like the usual eraser. Watch, not a trace of the line. Let me explain what happened. The eraser just painted over the line in the background color we had selected. See? Now watch as I change the background color. I am using the eraser, but it shows up like paint. So, for the eraser to act like one, the background color must be chosen carefully. Just like in the brush, Increase the size by pressing the bracket key as many times as needed. Everything's gone. Erased. And now, see a magical tool. The color replacement tool. I'll work on the image file. Increase the replacement tool size and zoom in. Now be careful. The color I click first will be remembered by the replacement tool as the color that needs to be changed. Watch, only the orange color is changing and the other colors remain the same. If I complete it, the boy will be left wearing a black pugdi with white, yellow and green squares. But black won't look bright. Can it become orange again? Of course. Go to edit and undo it. But remember, I cannot undo a replacement tool after saving the replacement. Then I can't get back the original color unless I have made a copy of the original image layer. Big mistake. 
I was making changes to the background layer. I need to first make a copy of the original layer this way. Always have the original image as the background and duplicate it before making any changes. The next tool needed to draw a shape is the pen tool. It creates a path that can be converted into a selection. But the pen tool gives a more perfect shape. Take a blank file. And begin making a path by clicking at regular intervals. These points are called anchor points. Click on the first anchor point to close the path. Observe that the path has filled in with the foreground color. Watch again. The other pen tool, the freeform pen, makes an irregular path. And there are tools to edit the path. The convert point tool makes a smooth anchor point into a corner point. Watch! To refine the path, more anchor points are needed. The Add Anchor Points tool will make them. And with the Delete Anchor Point tool, remove those unwanted. Watch! But I want curve too. So, with the convert point tool, drag the point. This brings out handles. Drag them out and turn them into the shape needed. Watch closely. Now, each path is made up of segments points and direction and the pen tool can be used to make changes to any of these to create a shape. Remember the interface module has shown where the paths panel is. Let's open it. Each path we make is automatically saved here. Convert it into a selection with this path selection tool. Let's color it. First choose the color. Now, fill it using the Bucket tool. But I want a graded color. So, let's choose the two colors needed as the foreground and background. Choose the gradient tool and drag its line across the shape. The length and angle it's dragged to will decide the gradient. This brings us to the end of the draw module.